The Secrets of Technology is brought to you by the StarQuest Production Network and is made possible by our many generous patrons. If you'd like to support the podcast, please visit sqpn.com slash give. You're listening to The Secrets of Technology. Hi, I'm Dom Bettinelli, and you're listening to The Secrets of Technology, where we discuss the technology news that's important to you from a uniquely Catholic point of view. And joining me today on the panel are Jack Barazzini. Hi, Jack. Hey, how's it going? Very well, thanks. And Pat Scott. Hi, Pat. Glad to be here. <laughs> good, good. So uh, for, first, I want to say the, the big news of the week, of course, is Apple's uh, annual iPhone announcement uh, and, and related products. Uh, the, the tech industry, the regular mainstream news, they all turn to look and see what Apple does. Even if you're not buying an Apple product, uh, Apple often, it's 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 one of the big three makers, Apple, Samsung, Google, you could say, who kind of lead the way in um, this is what mainstream flagships type phones are doing. I think it's safe to say that. Um, I mean, Apple gets a notch on their phone. And within a year, everybody's got a notch. You know, it's for good or for ill. It's what it is. So, so we want to talk a little bit at length about what the Apple iPhone announcements. But I, I know that there are a hundred podcasts out there right now, and a, and a thousand blogs all writing about it. But I want to make sure that we stay uh, with you, the listener, the re- the regular person who's just a te- you know needs a phone. They, they're not a they're not a professional creative. They're not. So, uh, so the, our our aim is, is to keep it grounded, um, and that's uh, why we have a couple different perspectives here. Uh, Jack, you are an uh, Android, uh, Linux type uh, guy, right? That that's your focus, right? Yeah, for the most part. Okay, uh, Pat, you are in both worlds. You have uh, Android, you have iPhone, Windows, and Mac, right? That's correct. Okay, and I am the Mac guy. I I bleed in six colors. Okay, so I am <laughs> through and through an Apple guy. So, uh, so, so I think we've got the bases covered. Now, did did either of you get to see the keynote when it was on? I watched parts of it. Yeah, I, I didn't sit through the whole thing, but I started it and I watched the highlights later on. Okay, Pat, how about you? Did you see any of it? No, I didn't get to watch it. I just did uh, reviews of summaries of other people's comments on it. Okay, I think that's good actually, because um, you know, the, there's that reality distortion field that, like, if you sit and watch it, you might get a little, you know, caught up in in the hype. Which I, which I, you know, admit to, to sometimes getting caught up in that. So I'm glad that uh, some of you are inoculated from some of that <laughs> compared to me. So let's let's run down the announcements uh, through, you know, through the, uh, the, the the as they made them in the uh, keynote, and then um, at the end we could kind of talk about what was missing, what do we think might what might have been missing from the the announcements, what was unexpected. And what we thought was the biggest news, um, and then uh, I'll tell you what I plan on buying because it's it, I'm in a buy a phone year <laughs> every two years. So, uh, and if you either of you are planning on buying anything, you know we could talk about that too. But first, um, let's talk about the very first thing up was this Apple Arcade. Uh, now, Apple Arcade is a game service; it's a subscription game service where you pay a, a flat monthly fee and you get access to. Uh, something like at the start, they said something like around a hundred games at the beginning, uh, that are exclusive to the service. So you won't find them anywhere else. Um, the, and what they announced was, uh, so it's going to come September 19th and it'll be $5 a month for a family subscription. Well, what did you think about the Apple arcade so far? This is, they, they announced it earlier this year and they kind of laid out the, the actual details this time. Did any, any thoughts on Apple arcade? Yay, Frogger. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's an updated 3D version of Frogger, which uh, is, oh, looks interesting. Yeah. Um, and they, they they showed a couple of games. Uh, any thoughts about uh, how it will compete? I don't think it's going to compete at all, honestly. Like, do you remember back in the day when they came out with, like, Sonic the Hedgehog for the original iPods when they still had the click wheel? And they made a big deal out of that, like, all these different games you could get on your iPod. And it, right. it was kind of like a gimmick, but it never really went anywhere. And this kind of has the same feel. 
It's interesting. I mean, because I think part of the reason it failed on the original iPod is it wasn't really that click wheel wasn't really made, and the screen weren't made for games. Right. You were you were kind of sh- shoving games into a music player. Um, on the other hand, the iPhone and iPad have really proven themselves to be really good for games, too. Yeah, I, I think it. I think it really depends on like all these services. Maybe the the quality of the games and are they accessible for most people? Um, right, and I don't. I don't know that the people who are going to want to be playing games more than just like Angry Birds or something you can find for free on the App Store are going to really be going to Apple for their system. Like right. I think Nintendo and Xbox and the traditional players are still where people are going to go. Yeah, the the casual so the casual gamers are not going to probably pay five bucks a month even for a family subscription for this. You know, one of right. things, one of the things they said was is that these are these are exclusives. These all these games will be exclusive to the Apple Arcade, and I wonder if that'll work against them because it means they won't get the best games. Right. You know, like well, Nintendo or they won't get other people that are wanting to play with them. That would be the you know. No one's right. talking it up among other people. If they don't have an Apple product, they're probably not going to know what game they're talking about. Yeah. Right, right. So it's exclusive to Apple products, so you can't play with your friends who have Windows or uh, Android devices. Um, yeah, you're not going to see Mario Kart here because, again, Apple wants everything to be exclusive, so you're not going to get those top titles. Um, on the other hand, one of the positives I saw was that you're going to get the kind of games – that would be too expensive or uh, standalone to pay for it. You know, like, in other words, in order for the developer to get it, their money, they'd have to charge you $20, $30. Or, you know, they'd have to put in-game purchases. And maybe it's not the sort of game where in-game purchases would work. So maybe you'll see a little variety. I'll I'll be honest, I wasn't blown away by any of the games that they demoed. But uh... Yeah, they just didn't seem to have a really good selection. And that's always been the problem with whenever Apple has tried to do games, like I know that when the original iPhone came out, they made a big deal out of all the different games you could play on it. And they were simpler back then, obviously, but even then they just, I don't really think that the people who are going to be wanting to play something more than just like a casual game are going to be going to Apple. I think that this almost seems like a less interesting version of the Nintendo switch. Right. Right. Pat, what did you think? Well, I was going to say, I think I see it from a different perspective because I would have a lot of clients who are not gamers, who are not out there every night playing games. And I see this as being something that is fairly inexpensive for a family to to pay for and have everybody in the family be able to play games on. Now, I haven't I, I haven't compared it to the Google one, but the type of game player I am is very casual and I like lots of variety. I don't necessarily want to to play one game and get really good at it, I kind of sample and try different things. And I think I've got a lot of my clients who are kind of in that, that same, I don't really want to, you know, spend lots of time and effort on a game. I want something I can play pretty easily and put it down and go get another one. And so I think I see more possibility in it. You know, I'm that sort of gamer with iPhone games as I get bored easily with, with a game, with a lot of these games, um, uh, boon, Toon Boom and you know Angry Birds and I'll play it for a while and then it gets to, I get to a point to a level where I just can't get past it and I'm like meh I'll find something else to to play you know with that sort of thing it might be yeah that that cash it maybe turn out to be they 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 frame it based on the the demos like the the super in games these like gamer sort of games but it may turn out to be really good for casual gamers um, and at five dollars a month for the whole family. Wow, that's, that's a good that's a good deal. That's a that is a low price. So, it'll be interesting to watch. I I'll, I'll probably get that for my family um uh, or you know for me anyway. <laughs> but uh, we'll see. I'll we'll still want to I still want to compare it to the Google Stadia to see, you know, because that was fairly inexpensive too, I think for a yeah. family. And Stadia was a little bit different in that they were going for serious they were promising some serious high-end oh. games uh, over that would that you could stream onto a iPad or or a low end t- uh, hardware uh for a low price. So yeah, I'm that's like, probably not me. Yeah, well, I, I mean that's really interesting to me. I I, I cuz there are games I'd love to play but I don't I don't own a gaming PC. 
but I'll be curious to see if they can actually pull it off. Uh, that'll be hard to hard to to guess. Yeah, I think there was a company that tried to do something just like that. It was probably like seven or eight years ago now. I cannot remember the name of it, but it was mm. basically like a whatever system you're using, the actual processing power is taking place somewhere offsite, right. so you don't have to worry about having like an insane graphics card or whatever. Right. If anyone could pull that off, it'll be Google. I mean, they have yeah. the hardware, the know-how, know-how and, all, and the money. So we'll we'll see. All right, let's move on to the next uh, announcement, which was they announced the Apple TV Plus service. Uh, this was the one that a lot of people have been waiting for because because they've been talking about it for so long. We've been hearing about it for so long, spending billions of dollars on these huge productions uh, for this competitor to Netflix and Hulu and Disney Plus and, you know, Lord knows everybody and their grandmother has a streaming TV service nowadays. So everyone's wondering, well, how much am I going to have to pay for this one? Because I got to pay a little bit every month. So they told us it's coming November 1st. And the big thing is, and this was surprising to me, it's also $5 a month for the family. So if you have a uh, a family ID, you know, uh, Apple ID, and with one year of you get one year of service free if you buy a, a new iPhone, a new iPad, a Mac or or Apple TV device. It's pretty cool. That is pretty my question is, does it stack? So for example, if I've got a family and I've I have to buy two uh iPhones and I have to buy an iPad this year, do I get three years? And if I mm. buy a new one every year, do I get a cut like in other words, do I? Is it effectively free if I'm a regular Apple <laughs> uh, customer for other stuff? That's that's really I, I'd like I'd, I'd be interested to find that's a out good the, question. Yeah, the uh, the details I couldn't find any details like that on there, and so it'll be interesting to see as we get closer. So what do you what do you think of this announcement? Um, w- uh, Apple TV, especially with the other one that's coming in November, Disney Plus. What how, how what do you think of this? I think for the cost, it's honestly something I'd check out, even if. I don't end up buying an iPhone or anything like that. It's got look, it's got some shows that look interesting. So it seems yeah. like they have the content at least. Like that for all mankind show looks pretty cool. It does, and uh, oh, they showed a trailer for the Jason Momoa one. Uh, it's a yeah, sci-fi see. one. See where yeah, which looked it's an interesting concept. We'll see how uh, no pun intended. We'll see how it <laughs> goes. So what do you think of this, Pat? What do you think of the announcement? Well, I hadn't really been interested that much until I saw that it was five dollars a month. For, for a family. And yeah. I'm saying, you know, it's worth trying. Yeah. And especially if I'm going to get an Apple product sometime this year, I get a year free. So no loss. I'd right. like to try it out and see what it's like. I think that's a good move on Apple's part. I would kind of doubt it's stackable. I think this is a putting a fishing line out and saying, can we grab you? Right. And we'll give you a lot of bait. And that's fine. And if I like it, I'll, I'll uh, maintain it. But, uh, I really am looking forward to the Disney one. Yes. And now this has made me pause and say, okay, now what? Uh, Am I going to keep adding on more subscriptions or am I going to say, hey, there's a limit on the number of these per month that I can do? That's been my problem is that there's so many services coming out now where I'm to the point now where I'm just going to do what I did when I didn't have cable and just not watch TV. (laughs) (laughs) Because it gets to a point where it's like you have to pay for a different service for each show you want to watch. And it's not really feasible after a certain number like i have amazon just because i use amazon prime but other than that that was always the thing with apple is i thought maybe will they bundle it in with apple music if you use apple music will they give it to you i mean this is essentially it's almost giving it away to every apple customer because uh, they've probably figured most apple people will buy one of these products over the course of a couple years i mean if i'm going to get essentially a year of of apple tv plus for free before this, uh, let me back up. Before this, I was like, mm, I don't think the catalog is going to be all that interesting. Like, not like Disney Plus, which is going to have Star Wars and Marvel and everything from my childhood, apparently. And <laughs> it's going to be uh, all this stuff. Uh, and I, I was looking at Apple. I'm like, well, it's, there's some interesting stuff there. But I mean, I see only a couple things I really want to see. Will that be worth what I thought might be 10 bucks a month? But for essentially free or or even five dollars a month, that comes very interesting. And I think it was a great move on Apple's part. This is a this was a a not a shot across the bow to Disney, but certainly a an answer, a very compelling answer. In fact, the if I was was going to be someone who's worrying, it wouldn't be Disney. I'd be Netflix who's worrying. Yeah, I think Netflix is 
going to run into trouble really soon because other than Stranger Things, I can't really think of a show they have that is really like stand out. Compelling, uh, yeah. must watch everybody. People actually signed up this summer for a month to watch Stranger Things, uh, right. which is interesting. Well, and and that's that's part of Netflix's problem, isn't it? They drop the whole show, the whole season at one uh, at once. So if you want, you know, if you want to watch Stranger Things new season, you pay ten bucks, and then you're there for the year, and that's it till next year when they come <laughs> back with the next season. Yeah, I wonder mm-hmm. if they'll end up moving to kind of how um, CBS does it with Star Trek, where it's once a week. Yeah, just to keep people for longer. I have a feeling that's where we're uh, th- we're going to move back to that model. I have a feeling, which is, uh, and I. I I think uh, Amazon's going to do that, and I think Apple will probably. We we don't know yet whether Apple is going to string these out or do them all at once. So that'll be my guess. Is my feeling is, and I have no, no basis for this except just a gut feeling that Apple is going to do release it once a week. The yeah. the traditional yeah, that's, model. That's my feeling too. But I was going to say, you know, you were talking about it being free for a year. I bet you they won't do that every year. In other words, that this may be kind of a promotional thing. Right. And next year when you buy your, your iPhone, there'll be something else they're giving away. Because I, I really can't see them saying, oh, this is a free service for all of our Apple people forever, as long as they keep buying products. It's a, yeah, it's, it's, I, I want to find the the details on this somewhere because, yeah, it's, I mean, it's, on the one hand, I could see it's like that five gigs a month they give you for for free in your iCloud account, you know, just that, a little bit extra to because you you've paid uh, an ungodly amount of money for your Apple hardware. Um, let's, let's see, I'm trying to look here. I think I'm looking on their website, and uh, so it's four ninety nine a month after a free trial, one subscription per family sharing group. Offer good for three months after eligible device activation, starting November first. Plan automatically renews until canceled. Restrictions and other ter- terms apply. My guess is that means that everybody who buys one of these devices in the next year is going to get a year of of service, right. and that's it. So you probably, I think you're right. You're right. Um, I just remembered I didn't put my email addresses, so I'm going to enter my email address to be notified when I can Yay. pay my money, <laughs> because you know that's what we do nowadays. <laughs> um, uh, Jack, did you have something you want to say on the on the Apple TV Plus? No, no, I'm good. Okay, so let's. Uh, so, if anything left? To, if there's anything left to say on on Apple TV Plus, I think that's, uh, you know, the again, there's there's a bunch of shows. They seem to be aiming at the um, high art, uh, uh, high budget, um, f- fewer higher quality uh, shows as opposed to say the Netflix model, which a whole ton of stuff yeah. <laughs> all thrown at you. Uh, so it it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. Um, all right, let's move on to the the next announcement. Was a, a kind of a surprise to me, and I'm kind of, I'm kind of jumping ahead to our questions at the end. But um, the the iPad upgrade, and this is for the basic iPad model. They have a because right now the iPad line has the uh, for everything from the mini to the regular iPad to the i the several iPad Pros. But this is the regular iPad basic model. They've upgraded it from 9.7 inch to 10.2 inch display. They've added the smart connector for smart keyboards uh, and Apple Pencil. It's the first generation Apple Pencil, like not the the one that has the lightning connector at the end that charges through that. Um, and uh, it's still got Touch ID. It apparently must have lightning instead of USB-C since it's got the old pencil with the lightning port. Uh, the price is, starts at three twenty nine, dollars and which is, I think, the same, and starts shipping September 30th. So what do you what do you think of this one and also how they positioned it directly against PC laptops? What what do you think of or think of this one? I would say honestly this would be something I'd be interested in especially cuz you can use the pencil now and I hadn't really thought about it before but one of my friends just got an iPad Pro with the pencil mm-hmm. and seeing how you can take notes on that and how you can do like art oh. and stuff cuz I have one of those Wacom tablets but you cannot yeah. see what you're drawing underneath the pen. So I feel like for something like that and for 329 it's not a bad price. You know, it it is pretty. I have an iPad Pro with a pencil. Um, I, I, you know, if I were looking now, I might actually look at the pencil. For me, has been really big, bigger than I thought it would be. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not an artist, but for uh, taking notes in an app called Good Notes, 
I do that for all kinds of like any meeting I go to. And it's for whatever reason, and maybe just my age, but I find I pay attention more and I remember what I'm what I'm writing more when I'm writing it as opposed to typing it. Yeah, I, definitely. I, I've heard that other people uh, you know, like the studies have shown that you retain information better when you handwrite it uh, as opposed to type it. So I really, I, I really, I agree with you on that one. That is a compelling product. Uh, my daughter uses it. She uses it for Khan Academy, which is a online, like a free online school sort of. Uh, she she uh, does math at Khan mm-hmm. Academy, and they have an app, and you can she can do all like the writing, all of the equations and arithmetic and stuff, right on the screen with the pencil, and uh, and that works for her much better than. Uh, we, what we tried before, which is like a book and paper and stuff like that. She just had trouble with that. Well, this works better for her. So um, uh, it's it, it at at three twenty nine. It's a compelling at two ninety nine for for education. So Pat, yeah. what do you think of, of the of the new iPad? I think that it's going to be a, a real one that I'm recommending for a lot of my people. For one thing, the mini's more expensive even, and yep. so it's like, why should I go to a smaller form factor when I can get this nicer one that works with a pencil and it's very reasonable. So I had several people that were kind of looking this month saying, you know, I wanted just a plain iPad, maybe a used one or maybe a a mini. And I'm saying, no, this is better. You've got better specs on it and it's a lower price. Why not? So I, I'm real excited. I'm afraid they're going to out uh, sell out of them. <laughs> <laughs> it's That's kind of what I'm worried about. It's interesting how they positioned it as a uh, competi- as a direct comparison to PC laptops, uh, especially uh, the ultra portables, um, and probably even Chromebooks as well. Uh, once you add that smart connector keyboard, I think they see it as as capable as a lot of those, which I thought was an interesting idea. It's interesting, but I don't really agree because I think that there's a whole different type of mindset that you use when you're on a full computer than you do when you're on a tablet, even if it's got a keyboard. Right. And, uh, I, you know, the, the pen is really nice. If you're not an artist, if you're doing markups of PDFs and stuff, it's still real valuable. But the the biggest thing is, is as I say, it just it's a good iPad. Yes. And so I've got a lot of people that could use that. I think with the changes to iPad OS, they've been moving it closer and closer to how a full OS works. So I think it definitely is getting to the point where it could be a replacement for people who they watch Netflix, they check their email, they take notes, they do things like that where you don't really need a laptop. So I definitely see see it being a replacement for that. I think if you want to do something more sophisticated, probably not yet, but for a lot of basic things. I, mean, yeah. like I already have a lot that. of people that, that have abandoned their PC at sitting in the corner gathering dust while right. they are on their iPad a lot. Yeah. I'm at the stage. So I have my oldest is 13. She, we got a, she has a Chromebook, uh, which I, we got for, I got a review unit for free. And so once I reviewed it and we could keep it. So I, I gave it to her and set her up on it and it's worked out really well. I, which I'm a little surprised by, cause I always thought I'd get her a, an iPad. For that for her because all my kids are really good with iPads and now I'm looking at my next uh, uh, child my my uh, 11 year old thinking maybe I should get her a Chromebook too um, it's just that I mean they they use the iPads they love the iPads but there's something about the typing and as as nice as the smart connector keyboard is it's not a real keyboard yeah. so yeah for some people it would be fine especially for someone like someone who's older who'll sit with it at a desk and mm. they'll they'll type out some things there are some people certainly um uh, but i i love the ipad for just the portability and being able to take it take it to a meeting and 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 use it for stuff like that uh so i i think this is a great choice and and frankly i think that the decision between something like a chromebook and an ipad it's a tough one uh and i could go either way with it really I think for, for looking at kids, I think that they need to be exposed to multiple types of devices. So having a Chromebook available yeah. and having an iPad available is going to give them experience both on a laptop type thing and a, an iPad type thing. Yes. But uh, yeah, I think it depends upon how much somebody's keyboarding, whether whether the Chromebook's a better deal. I still think the iPad's a better all-around tool. Yeah. 
being able to use a keyboard, I think a, a, I think a lot of kids are not getting that opportunity to yeah. spend a lot of time on a keyboard. Uh, and I think it's still going to be important for a while yet. So we'll, we'll see. All right. So that's the iPad. A uh, little bit of an update there for the basic model. Uh, nothing for the pros. Then, uh, then they introduced the fifth generation Apple Watch. This is the fifth. The Apple Watch has been around for five years. It's kind of hard to imagine. Uh, and how far it's come. I have a Series 1, and let me tell you, it feels old and decrepit. <laughs> uh, my battery runs out somewhere around now. Uh, so I like it's it's you know around nine o'clock at night my battery is pretty much gone, um, and it's slow and and that's really. But the newer battery, the the series three, four, and five, are, or at least the three and four, look amazing. The fifth it looks really great. Um, they they uh, so let's talk about how they first how they talked about Apple Watch. They've really shifted from when they first introduced Apple Watch. At first it was really a computer on your wrist, a communicator, and it was all about that sort of stuff. And then when they, I think as they saw people use it, it really became a, this is a health device as opposed to a, you know, primarily a productivity device. And so they showed us, uh, and I don't know if you had a chance to watch it. They have it on their website uh, under Apple, uh, apple.com under the watch section. A, it was a sort of emotional video of people who had written into Apple to talk to, to tell them about how the Apple watch changed their life in a positive way. Uh, people whose lives were saved and, um, a woman who was pregnant and the watch told her she had uh, an irregular heartbeat that turned out to be an infection and they had to have an emergency C-section to save the baby. If she hadn't had known that, she might not have, she might have lost the baby or a guy who had fallen and, uh, and it did the emergency call because it had detected the fall and some things like that. So it was a, it, it was a very interesting emotional connection that they made. And then they talked about a lot about the health features and the health studies that they that they're participating in. And uh, so, first, I want to talk about that. What do you think about these health studies? Should should a, a user should an Apple Watch user agree to give their anonymized health data to these researchers uh, through their watch? What, what, what's your what's your opinion on that? I I have already, yeah. you know, and uh, I participated in the EKG study when it was, I've still just got a series three, but before they came out with the four, they sent you a little EKG machine and you could compare, you know, you, you send your results versus the watch and, the, you know, they were saying it's 98%, 97% accurate as far as detecting uh, an irregular heartbeat or a, a fast heartbeat, et cetera. So, I I guess if I'm going to trust anybody to with a medical device, I'm I'm kind of leaning toward trusting Apple with that. Okay. Well, Jack, what do you think about the health information? I trust Apple more than Google at this point, but mm -hmm. I don't know how much that's really saying. I think honestly, it's one of those things where if there's going to be hundreds of thousands of people to millions of people submitting data, I don't think people really need to worry about their themselves being singled out for any sort of data breach. Like most of us are not that interesting. That's yeah. kind of my view of it. Good. Now compare this to say, I don't know, Facebook where a, a story came out today. Uh, and, and this is just sort of a tangent because it's because up where there were these, I think there were Android apps that were for women for tracking their cycles. And as part of tracking your cycle, I understand that you have to record when there is, Intimate activity. activity. Oh, yeah, I saw that story. <laughs> um, and it turns, it turns out that these companies were giving the data on the women's activity, their, their, the data they were recording, to Facebook. Well, like, <sighs> what is Facebook doing with this information on these poor women? I'm, I just astonishing. So, yeah, I, I mean, Apple has they, – they're not perfect. They've stumbled a bit the whole um, – assistant debacle that's been going on through all of the assistants right. the, uh, of, of con contractors listening to the, to the recordings, they've all kind of fallen short on that, but Apple has proven themselves in more so than the others, I guess. So I, I agree. I did the heart study um, and I would probably do these other ones, I think, because they just, I feel like more data given to scientists is better. Right. And I think the biggest benefit to with Apple versus Facebook or Google is that Apple's not an ad company and Facebook and Google are. Yeah. 
they Apple has no vested interest in knowing what you're doing. <laughs> it doesn't right. do them any good. I remember somebody talking about sometimes if you're always paying attention to your heartbeat and always paying attention to your things, that some doctors are worried that this is going to kind of bring people to be overemphasizing yeah. uh, the monitoring. And so, but I guess that's, that's, that's always a case when you've got a medical device that that's close by is that it could be, you know, taking your blood pressure every few minutes, you know, is right. not a good thing. And yet I do know some people that, that because their blood pressure machine is in the house, they do tend to overuse it and get real worried. So I think that's the only negative I've heard about yeah. the tendency to use a watch for more medical stuff. I, I heard the same thing about sleep tracking, that people who tend to do sleep tracking and look at their data on a regular basis tend to sleep worse because they're obsessing about, about their sleep. <laughs> um so, I mean, I, I have a sleep tracker that I use, but I look at it like once every couple of weeks just to see, or or if I had a particularly good night or bad night, or, you know, just, oh, how bad was last night? Oh, yeah, I was up like seven times with the kids or whatever it was. But, you know, in general with this stuff, it's better to, less is better, I think, and let it alert you to abnormalities as opposed to obsessing over Correct. the day-to-day. Yeah. -day. So, I, yeah, I, I agree with that. I I think in the beginning, people may, you know, tend to obsess, but like I, I do the sleep tracker too. And it's like in the beginning, I was really noticing it. Now it's like I only look at it once in a while and just to kind of say, oh, yeah, it's about the same as usual. <laughs> you know, no big deal. Now, I had an issue with my watch last year where this one app that was a heartbeat measurement app consistently was showing me as having elevated heart rates, elevated heart rates. And I'm like, OK, I made a point with my doctor. I said, you know, there's a history of heart disease in my family. You know, I, it was it was doing this, and she's like, "Well, let's send you in to get some tests." Well, long story short, I ended up with the the, the having them send the the thing through my veins, and the, they wanted to do MRI and all this other stuff. And I, and I, I eventually had to stop them because it's like we weren't finding anything. We're we're hunting for stuff, and I'm not sure that the initial prompt this my phone sending me my my watch sending me in there was all that accurate. In fact. After an update to the OS, it stopped alerting wow. me. So I have a feeling that all of that, all of that time, expense, and worry was caused by a bug in the software. Yeah, which yeah. is a <laughs> which is a, a sort of an, an interesting lesson for relying on this sort of stuff. I mean, uh, of course, the doctors themselves were looking at at their data, so it's not the only thing that was sending me in there. But um, I eventually had to assert myself and say, "All right, we're not finding anything." I'm done Let's exploring. <laughs> yeah, I'm done yeah. exploring. Let's let's move just on. Just hope you didn't go to house. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> right. So let's talk about the new watch itself, Series Five. Uh, the big, the big addition to this one was uh, always on. Uh, so you you know you don't have to raise your wrist and then raise it again and then wriggle it around and then <laughs> tap it, <laughs> which is what I have to do a lot. In order to get it to show what time it is, uh, uh, it's always it's always shows your your watch face, but dims when not in use. So it goes to full brightness when you raise the wrist, but otherwise it's available. Uh, what do you think of of this? Uh, some um, gear watches, uh, some what is it called? Android Wear, Android Wear watches. Mm -hmm, yeah, ha have had this feature for a while. Uh, is it about time or is this not a real, that big a deal? What do you think of this? I think as long as it doesn't compromise the battery life, it's it's a good thing and it makes it easier to use. I know my phone has a thing where you can set it to have the uh, clock on the front be always on and it just mm -hmm. dims it to where you can barely see it. And because it's the OLED screen, it's just the white against the black and it hasn't really affected the battery life at all. So I imagine it's something similar to that. And yeah. it's a nice feature to have. And it looks kind of cool because it... When they dim it way down, it almost looks like it's just on the surface without even the light coming through. So it's kind of like a like a premium look. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, I've seen some watches where it's a dual layer, where when the OLED part or the LCD part turns off, there's that the old LED screen sort of shining through it. So like the, oh, nice. the old style uh, digital watch. So I mean that's a real power savings, of course. Uh, but this is, it's the OLED, like you're saying. Um, and they, they claim that it has the same 18-hour battery life. 
uh, that they they manage this by by increasing efficiencies, which my guess is they wanted to do this from the beginning, but they couldn't get it efficient enough to justify it until now. Uh, that's my my uh, my guess. Uh, Pat, what do you what do you think of this? The new a- of Apple Watch. Well, the first one I heard about, I thought, oh, that doesn't mean anything to me. And the more I think about it, I thought that that would be kind of nice not to have to tap it every time I want to to see because I don't have mine on raise because yep. I was getting the light coming on when I didn't want it on necessarily. Right. Yeah. So yeah, I think I think it'll be good as long as the battery isn't compromised and and basically, yeah, mine runs out on a three toward the end of the night that I usually take it off about ten o'clock, put it on the charger for an hour and a half, and it's good for all night then. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, that works. So the one of the in, the in their little introductory video, they they showed that uh, one of the potential uses is when you're in that long meeting and you want to surreptitiously peek at what time it is without <laughs> without you know <laughs> raising your obvious. watch. <laughs> yeah, without being obvious about it. Uh, I like that uh, usage. Uh, That's good. They added um, a compass, which you know I I don't know uh, that doesn't excite me all that much. I mean latitude and longitude that. I mean, it's interesting. I, I suppose as a, with scouting, that'll be handy. Uh, Geocaching or something would be fun. Yeah, yeah. Or yeah. sailing, yeah. Yep. But uh, no, I'm yep. not going to use that part. And then uh, they said every cell model will now have international emergency calling in 150 company countries with even without your iPhone. So that's that'd that's an cool. interesting use. So you know, if you're in France and you fall and you need an emergency call, you know, it'll it'll call the French. Uh, not nine one one in France. Nine nine nine. I think it's nine nine nine. Uh, whatever it is. So they'll call the local. Silver, rose gold, and black. Aluminum, steel, titanium, ceramic. You know, it's a bunch of different uh, models. I mean, f- frankly, I-, I think most people I know, if they're going to get a watch, it's going to be an, an aluminum. I don't think people. Uh, most people I know aren't going to be shelling out for the the the. Uh, finer finishes i mean titanium come on <laughs> that no. yeah. a excessive uh gps models and cell models are the same price i think um and uh, they'll keep the the series three available for 199 which is interesting not the series four but the series yeah, three i was wondering about that why why not keep that going i guess they just want you to just switch over i think the four i think it's an admission that the four and the five are so close that there's not there's not a lot of difference that they couldn't I don't think they could get the four down to one ninety nine uh-huh. if you know what I mean you know to, 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 for they could a, have a done two ninety nine <laughs> yeah well I think they want to get it way down to make it you know uh, you know something available for the masses that's that's what Christmas means, so. yeah yeah exactly uh, there was a lot of rumors ahead of, ahead of time that there would be sleep tracking in the watch uh, but no sleep tracking frankly it doesn't bother me. Um, the, again, the battery life is not so long that I think it's worthwhile and I don't like sleeping with something on my wrist anyway. So that's another, another tech piece of technology that sent me to the hospital on a wild goose chase. My Fitbit, um, I, I think I might've mentioned on the show once before I slept on it wrong and it pinched, it pushed a nerve in my head, which caused half of my face to go numb. And I thought I was having a stroke. Oh, geez. So, well, well, I didn't think I was having a stroke. I th- I thought my face was numb. I went to the hospital. They thought I was having a stroke, and I spent the day, uh, in the hospital for no reason, <laughs> until a neurologist said, "How do you sleep like this?" And I put my hand up to my forehead, and he's like, "Do you wear something on your wrist?" Oh yeah, my Fitbit. See, he's like, "Yeah, that's probably what happened." <laughs> oh my uh, gosh. There so. is a comment I wanted to make about sleeping with the watch because I do. I yeah. I. I I charge it up before I go to sleep. The nice thing about it is when my phone alarm goes off and my watch alarm goes off, it just vibrates on my wrist. And therefore, I like that yeah. alarm much better than having to hear a loud alarm in the room when somebody else is in the same room. That's true. So I've really liked the fact that I can just see what time it is and then I can get alarmed that way. So. Yeah, I don't think a buzzing on my wrist would wake me, frankly. Well, it does me, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, it's, it's good if it, if it does, yeah. Uh, that's a good one. So, all right, so every, all of this so far has been sort of preliminary. This is all the halo around the main event. All of these things are, are sort of accessories to or connected to somehow uh, the iPhone. So then at the, la- the, the big last announcement is uh, the iPhone 11. And so... Last year, they they tell us that the the best selling phone was not the XS or the XS Max, the excessive phones, but the XR, uh, the lower priced phone, and I think that made an impression on Apple. They in how they position this these phones. The XR was sort of 
the also, oh, by the way, here's a cheaper phone for you, but you really want these XS and XS Max. But, you know, here's a cheaper phone if you have to have it. This year it's, okay, here's the phone. It's really great. We'll talk about it for a long time. And, oh, by the way, if you're a pro, you could get this too. You know what I mean? I think it's a different a different nice way shift. of positioning. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think it's just the cost, like, yeah. last year. Wasn't, I think, was the XR the one that cost 1000 off the bat, or was that the uh, XS? That was the XS. The XS okay. was the start of 1000 I think that that was the main reason that they're rejiggering their approach, because $1,000 for a phone is kind of insane. Yeah, the XR is what I had been recommending this whole last year. If, if somebody wanted a really good phone but didn't want the 8, which was an older model. Mm-hmm. So right. the XR has been real popular among my clients. And I, I don't exactly remember, but it was, I think it was like around $700, $800. I was thinking it was seven ninety nine dollars or 8, 850 or something yeah, like that. Yeah, I think that. it was like yeah. 800 bucks. which it's interesting because this year the 11, the basic model, it's seven hundred bucks, so they brought That's it down a, a little. <laughs> yeah. So what do we got? We got uh, we got a bunch of different colors that makes it's very clearly a successor to the XR, which came in a lot of colors. It's got they spent a ton of time on all of these phones on photography and video. Um, if 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 you dropped out of the sky after you know f- being away for fifteen years, you'd say that the, the these things are made to take fo- these are cameras that yeah. do a little bit of computers on the side. Uh, and, and, you know, frankly, the way most people use it, it might be not far from the truth. Um, the, these are, are, for all intents and purposes, really high end cameras. So the, it's the iPhone 11 has two lenses. The wide, the, I love this. It's the wide angle lens and then the ultra wide lens instead of the regular lens <laughs> and the wide angle lens. Um, I technically, I think the wide angle lens is based on the aperture is, or the 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 width of it is technically a, a wide angle lens in general anyway. Um they've improved the night mode so now it's as good as the Pixel <laughs> or in the same class as the Pixel and others that have been doing it well. Um they talk about improved handheld stabilization, they've improved the selfie cam which now does wide angle, does 4K video, does slow mo video, all things that it couldn't do before. You had to, you had to use the other side. Um and you get an hour longer battery life. 6.1 inch screen and it's 700 bucks uh, starting. So what so let's start with that. The how do you how do you feel about the 11 when you saw that? Um is this a is this the phone for everyone? Is this the phone we're going to recommend to to the regular Joes? It's the one I'm going to recommend if they want to get the latest one. Now if they want to get an older model then there's some question about what you know because of of price you know that some of yeah. them may choose to go an older model but yeah this is I had somebody that was all set to get an XR and I, I emailed them back and I said huh look at the new one that just released right, right. <laughs> I think you want this one instead right. the only thing again will be when is it going to really be available is it going to be uh, if somebody needs a phone now or really soon is that going to be so over overbought that it's not going to be available right away? Yeah. Right. As someone who has Android and has not been super impressed with the phone I have, um, when this comes out, I might look at getting this because I want an iPhone. I'm kind of tired of how haphazard Android is. Mm. So this is definitely updates, something that looks you know, interesting yeah. to me. Yeah, the updates and how unless you get yeah unless you get a Pixel, you're not going to get consistent support. Interesting, interesting. So yeah, I mean this is a good. Flag the Apple, yeah. Apple's phones are all sort of flagship quality phones, they call them. And at six ninety nine, it's uh, it's a compelling phone. I mean, it before they showed the uh, the iPhone Pro stuff, the uh, eleven Pro stuff. I'm thinking this looks like a great phone. The the video, the photography. Now, granted, the photos are all taken in ideal conditions mm-hmm. with lots of light. I mean, the video that they took was on the Bonneville site uh, salt flats. With a clear sky, I mean, you don't get better light than that. Uh, so uh, you know, you take that with the greatest salt, I guess. Grain but, uh, sand. <laughs> <laughs> but but uh, they uh, still, I mean, the the, the handheld, the, the improved handheld stabilization, the night mode, all that stuff. Really, I mean, there's only a couple things in the pro that 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 make it a a little bit more compelling for the regular folks, uh, which we'll get to in a second. But you know. It looks and they said talk about faster uh, Face ID and 
some other stuff like that. So it's it looks pretty I've got interesting. a question. How much memory uh, on the 699 model? I think it's they they're starting I think they're still starting at uh 64. Let me just double check. It'll take me a second here. 64. 64 128 and That's 256. Good. That's yeah. good for for the starting out phone. Yeah. Yeah, Apple I think has started has had 64 as the basic amount for a while. Um frankly, I've got 256 on my iPhone 10 and I'm using maybe half of it and that's me not being careful at all about <laughs> keeping stuff off. Uh, I used to have a 64 iPhone 7, I think it was, and I was constantly having to remove things to make space. Uh, so I think like 256 is plenty. Uh, the I, I, the iPhone 11 Pro goes up to 512, oh, which okay. is a lot. <laughs> it's, a, it's a crazy You've got amount. lots of movies on that. <laughs> right. Yeah, uh, I don't think if you're going to... If you're going to have a device that has 4K video capability, you can't really go lower than 64 and have it be usable. Right, right, right. right. You've got to you, you got to store it. You can't you can't say it'll go in the cloud because it takes you use up all your data just by uploading to the cloud. Right. Uh, so okay, so that's the iPhone 11, and then they they tried out the 11 Pro, um, which comes in uh, space gray. I love space gray. You mean black? It's let's just call it black, but space gray, silver. Gold, not rose gold, so it's not pinkish gold. It's re- it's regular gold, gold, and midnight green, which is a kind of an interesting color choice. Uh, in two sizes, five point eight and six and a half inch OLED. Uh, now, I have to tell you, I have small hands. I'm a you know, it's, that's just me. I'll never play a full octave on a piano. You know, that's just me. I love the the bigger the phone, the better. I don't know what it is. I I have two monitors, twenty seven inch monitors in front of me. I don't think you could ever have too much display. That's my thing. And so I love the idea of having a giant phone. So, man, that is compelling. So, uh, it's the same CPU as the iPhone 11, the 813 Bionic, they call it. Uh, so same heart to it. Battery life it increases four hours for the Pro and five hours for the Pro Max. Uh, mm-hmm. it, and the big thing is it's got three cameras, a wide, ultra-wide, and now a telephoto uh, lens. That's the thing it has that the um, that the 11 doesn't. And one of the things I love was how they explained the how they take a photograph, the computational photography that they do. Whereas when you take a photo, it's not just snapping a shot. All three cameras fire, and they all then the the the, the neural engine and the CPU look at each pixel at a time. There's like a trillion operations they do, and it tunes it pixel by pixel through the to the photo uh they takes nine photos and and picks the best parts of each one i mean it just it was it was fascinating and i mean i'm sure wow. they all way oversimplified it uh but uh, so um it very interesting that they do that and then they had another interesting thing was they brought out this developer of this app called filmic pro now i have filmic pro on my phone and it's a pro level video camera software that lets you really lets you tune the camera on the phone. And what, what they basically demonstrated is, is you can have it recording all three back cameras and the selfie camera at once. Oh, wow. And you can, and in fact, you can have them all on screen at once, and then you can do live switching between them, uh, which is just fascinating. And in fact, you could set it up so that, you know how you have a, an interview where you have a, one camera facing the interviewer and the other camera facing the interview subject, well, you can do that with the selfie camera and the regular camera on the other side simultaneously. Now, recording on both sides simultaneously, that is a huge uh, CPU uh, drain. And so this this A13 Bionic must be incredible, this chip. So I'm really impressed by this. Pricing, <clears throat> the Pro starts at 999 for the 64 gig and 1099 for the the Pro Max, the bigger one. Um, so what do you think? Is anyone else getting a uh, trip phobia vibes from the three cameras on the back? <laughs> there is a real phobia called tripophobia. Yeah, where th- th- things gathered in threes. Yeah, is it, Ooh, is I have heard of this. Yeah, yeah. They, I've heard some uh, some funny stuff about that. And Jack, in fact, you shared a funny picture of the entire back of the iPhone. All oh, that was funny. <laughs> camera yeah, yeah. lenses. <laughs> So, 25 yeah, cameras that, or something. 
Well, it reminds yeah. me of a few years ago. The uh, there was an arms race among the uh, the uh, razor, the shaving razor companies. Uh, one company would have two blades. The next company had three. The next company had four. And then we, you wait for someone to come up with eight blades. You know, that's six inches wide. You know, yeah. we just <laughs> so where I'm not sure where we end with the uh, the the camera lens arms race on phones, but uh, uh, it, it it's interesting. Uh, but uh, is this a phone for the regular folk? Is this or is this going to be the high end people who've got money to burn? I think this is the definitely the high end videographer photographer at least like high end amateur photography and videography. Like honestly, if I had a thousand dollars that I could drop on a phone with a really really nice camera, I'd go for it just because it'd be nice to have a good camera and not have to have a camera and a phone mm-hmm. and all the different devices you got to have. But I think for most people the quality you're going to get on the iPhone 11 is going to be perfectly fine. Yeah, I agree. I agree with that. But Pat, what do you think on this? Yeah, I, th- I think the 11 is going to be for the average person. The uh, the the Pro and the Pro Max are going to be for those who just have to have the best photography possible. And for most of my people, they like taking pictures, but they're not to that degree. Right. And uh, I have a few photographers who are really serious about it. And uh, so they, I can see a couple of those going for the the pro, or the max, but not my average client. You know, the interesting Apple a lot has a trade in program, which is kind of interesting. Where if you've got an older iPhone, so I've got an iPhone ten. If I trade it in, I can get like four hundred dollars off of a a pro max, for instance. Uh, I was looking at the 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 numbers, and so I could pick up an iPhone Pro Max for about. A, a little bit more than, well, probably about the price of the iPhone 11 that I would get, because I, I, I wouldn't get the 64, I'd get the 256. Mm-hmm. Um, so for about the price of that, I could get the Pro Max by trading in my old iPhone. So that's very compelling to me. That's uh, Do you get the, any trade-in on the 11, or is it only on those t- of higher two oh, models? Any, any of them. So the trade-in will work on the uh, iPhone 11 as well. Okay, so then I could trade in my my, t- my X on a on the uh, eleven, and that that I'd be in good shape then. Yes, yep, yep. And in fact, if you use the uh, App Store app on your iPhone, it will it will recognize your phone. It will take you through the whole process and get you all set up for when the phone is the new phones are released, and you just you know finish the transaction, which is very interesting. Uh, the phones will go on sale on September twentieth. Uh, thank you, Apple, for recognizing that there are people who live on the East Coast who don't want to get up at three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they used to do it at midnight or two, or or I think it was midnight Pacific time. Now it's going to be five a.m. Pacific time, and so uh, we have we can sleep until eight a.m. on the East Coast and and make sure we can get our phones if we want to get them uh, right on the first ordering. Uh, and that's this Friday, so it'll uh, as as I release this, this will be tomorrow morning. So. Uh, if you want to be among the first, uh, otherwise it's going to be in stores on the twentieth. So, and then uh, then they had some stuff about from the Apple retail store, just like some basic stuff and the new um, Apple, uh, not Times Square, the Apple uh, one in New York City on Fifth Avenue is going to be reopening their iconic store, the Cube, et cetera, et cetera. So, what was missing from this announcement? You know, the in this keynote, what what what. Did we not hear about that you think maybe we should have heard about or that you're curious about? Anything? I'm surprised they didn't talk about 5G at all. Right. Not not, not even a mention of it. Yeah. That's curious. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's not a bad idea, not a bad reason to. I mean, frankly, 5G is more hype than promise at this point. Um, even though there are companies putting 5G phones out, and even though the likes of AT&T is putting 5G on my phone today, which it's not. <laughs> Like they, they have the, it'll say 5G in the top. It's not 5G. Uh, yeah. They're just calling it for LTE 5G. It's, there won't be true 5G phones until next year for, in most cases anyway. But uh, yeah, it's surprising that they didn't, they, I don't know if it's surprising, but it's interesting that they didn't go with the hype. I think maybe they've decided that uh, it is hype and there's no reason to hype that, that up. So, one well, one of the things I heard too was that in order to take advantage of that five G, there's got to be a lot more yes towers or, or not towers, but Nodes. places to broadcast it, and right. and that's not there yet. Right, it'll be mainly in the first five years. It's going to be mainly uh, very dense urban areas where you're going to get the right. benefit of that. 
So they may have been looking at the majority of the people couldn't use it. So why spend a lot of hype on it, you know, right. until it's ready out there? Okay. Pat, was it anything that you thought was missing from this announcement? Uh, the only thing I was, uh, I guess this is mostly centered around the iPhones, but, you know, yeah, Catalina, uh, I was thinking that that's something I would, I, I'm surprised they didn't mention it. I know, think they didn't it, really go in, into that. Yeah, at all. I think it got press released, and that the new Catalina for Mac it'll be out in October. Uh, right. So, so in that, but we didn't get a release date for iOS or iPadOS 13, which I thought would be even more relevant right. to this. Appropriate, uh, yeah. 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 So, uh, my guess is it'll be out when the new phones are shipping. I mean, that's because the new phones will have to have it on them. Um, also, they didn't talk about any new Apple TV hardware. With Apple TV Plus coming in in a month and a half, there's they or or so there was no mention of new Apple TV hardware for to connect to your TV. So I thought that was interesting too. I guess it's just, I mean, what they have out now works fine. There's no real reason to have an upgrade. I mean, something you're going to plug into your television to play video as long as it's yeah. got 4K. I mean. Right. I mean, like this, the last one that came out because they could add 4K to it. There's not really a compelling new technology to add to it. That's right. true. Okay. So uh, was there anything that you found unexpected about this announcement? Think that something you didn't expect that we got? Um, it seemed pretty by the numbers, which is how Apple has been for the past like four or five years at this point now, honestly. I was pleasantly surprised at the at the price on the 11. Yes. The price of that the 11. was my biggest, my mm -hmm. biggest. Well, and the uh, Apple the, TV uh, Plus, the gaming and the their their uh, Apple T uh, Plus. Yeah, that those were only five dollars. That was that was a surprising thing to me. One thing that it was, it's kind of so funny to say it was surprising to me was how there is there is no big objection this year. There's nothing where the a lot of the people, the observers, the pundits, the the journalists could say, "Oh, Apple, what are you doing?" You know the the, on the level of removing the headphone jack or the yeah. other things like that, or being over a thousand dollars for the first time for a flagship phone and that sort of thing. There was nothing, everything in this, on, on this announcement today was pretty like, Hmm, that's interesting or even surprising, but it's, it's good. And there right. was nothing objectionable. No uh, controversy. <laughs> right. There's no controversy there no, as far. Yeah. Yeah. There was no a thousand dollar monitor stands. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, that's uh, true. Uh, so that'll be later this year. Uh, and <laughs> so what do you think was the biggest news? I mean, I, I, it, maybe it's obvious, but maybe it isn't. And maybe you have a different take than, than I do. But uh, what do you think was the biggest news from this announcement? I think the uh, the fairly affordable iPhone 11 was pretty big news. It seems like they're focusing more on the mid-level market, probably just for the sake of sales. And that's yeah. nice to see. Yes. The the one thing I was kind of surprised at is there's been so much uh, discussion about why don't they come up with a smaller phone? Because I have uh, the opposite. I've got a lot of my clients that don't, they really can't handle a larger phone. Right. They want one the size of the six. Right. You know, and they came, did several times where they came out and sold off old supplies of their sixes or sevens and people jumped on them and they cleaned them out within hours. So I was thinking that was going to be a, Hey, maybe we'll put out one. That's just a little smaller. And they, they didn't, I was real surprised by that. I have heard a rumor that they're planning to launch um, another phone of the, of the class of the five C. Remember that it was the first, yes. sort of like the yeah. XR is it had the plastic back. It was the cheaper phone. It was a little smaller than the ones at the time. I, I have heard a rumor that there's a plan to, and that eventually became the SE, I guess it was, to bring back a phone in that range at some point. I don't know. It, maybe once they sell off all of the iPhone 8s that they've still got in stock at 449, um, that might be their, their plan there. So it'd be interesting. Yeah, I really I, wish they would have won that 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 entry level one that would be nice for a lot of my older folks. Yeah, I, I there so is so they a, wouldn't go to a to a, a, another brand. Right, I, yeah. I I think there is a market for the smaller phone still. Um, I think we the phones have just gotten bigger and bigger. Now we're crossing over into iPad Mini territory, but there are uh, there are people who would like a smaller phone. Um, I would for me the big the big news I get yeah is the how capable and well-priced the iPhone 11 is. Uh, 
in in the past few years, the the not top end phone, whether it's the XR or the eight, were missing features, not just like a, an extra lens, but a feature like depth control or something like that. Uh, you know, in the portrait photos or something that was just oh, if only I could go for that next one, I would have all of the features. Uh, the iPhone eleven has all the features. It feels the, complete. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't feel like it's been crippled at all. Um, and that's a really interesting place to be with that phone. This is Dom Bettinelli of the StarQuest Production Network, and we need your help. Over the past year, we've grown by leaps and bounds. Some of our podcasts, like Jimmy Akin's Mysterious World, are among the most popular shows we've ever produced. But that success is in danger. Creating a dozen shows has caused our expenses to rise, and right now we aren't making ends meet. We must reach the financial break-even point if we're going to continue. If our reserves are depleted, we'll have to cut back many of our shows. We might have to shut down entirely. That's why it's crucial we hear from you right now please go to sqpn.com slash give and click the become a patron button to make your monthly pledge if you're already a supporter please consider increasing your pledge the need is urgent so please go to sqpn.com slash give that's sqpn.com slash give all right we've, we're going long of course uh, so uh, we had some headlines but maybe we'll hold them for another uh, another time because i want to get in our picks of the week because those they're there's some good picks here this week. Yeah, so let's go right to that. Jack, what's your pick of the week? My pick of the week is a Stellarium. And basically what it is, is it's a, a observatory software. Um, you can use it for astronomy, but you can also use it just on its own, just if you want to like look at the sky. Um, and you can tie it in with telescopes. I use it sometimes with the telescope where you can track what you want to track. It'll give you projections of where things are going to be on certain days. Um, it's really nice. They have a app and the cool thing about the app is it's got, um, you can tie it in with your GPS and with your compass and it has a red eye mode where everything is in red. So it doesn't affect your night vision. So you can use mm. that when you're actually outside at night, you can hold your phone up, look around and locate where things are. So I really like it. It's free on desktop. I think it's two ninety nine or three ninety nine on, um, Android. I'm not sure what it is on, um, Apple. I think it's the same, same price. Um, but it's just fun to play around with, and it's free, so That's I awesome. definitely yes. recommend that. Cool. Yeah. Linux, OS X, or Mac OS, Windows, uh, and they even have a, a a web version through a browser. So yeah, that's wow. that's pretty that's awesome. Cool. That's a good one. That's a good one. Um, Pat, what's your pick of the week? Well, we broke down and got a video doorbell, <laughs> and uh, I was thinking I was going to get the Ring, and then when I saw the Google one, the fact that it's continuously recording. And uh, it doesn't just respond to movement or sound. It's just always there. You do have to buy a subscription if you want them to save that video for very long. But it's it's $5 a month, you know, to uh, get the video saved. And to me, it's worth it. And I've already had a couple of times where it's been very helpful when somebody said they were going to bring something by and the other person said, did it? Did my person get it there on time? I could look and say, yeah, they came up to the door at such and such a time with my package, you know, and it was uh, like leaving a cord for me. And uh, so it's already been helpful. And so I like it a lot. And the only problem was, was the time involved getting trying to get the uh, ringer set up right because you had to go into the old doorbell chime box and and fix oh, yeah. that but but uh it's all done and i really like it that's nice yeah we've been a ring we've had a ring for ages um uh, and if, if i if i were starting fresh i might i might go with that but i've already got some ring security cameras so it would be i'd be straddling two ecosystems yeah you don't want to do that yeah no. but uh yeah i the that's one of the, the knocks i've had against the ring was how long it takes for the camera to get going and sometimes you know, it tells you there's motion detected, and I go, okay, waiting, 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 and then you know, the, I see the like the 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 foot of the person leaving the camera view. I'm like, ah, like it took you forever to yeah. get started. I couldn't see the person. So, uh, yeah. but that's this is a yeah, it's comparably priced to the ring, so that's good. That's good. Well, my pick is a web service called FakeSpot, FakeSpot.com, and it, what it does is it helps you. It it spots fake reviews on e-commerce sites so like amazon best buy sephora steam walmart and then on TripAdvisor or yelp there's, there's a scourge of 
people posting fake reviews to to boost to falsely boost their uh their their total reviews um you know you have these companies from or the you know shady companies from various places that are selling knockoff products and they want to stand out so they they have people post all these fake rev- five star reviews or whatnot and what fake spot does is it analyzes them it kind of keeps some of how it does it proprietary so that the the bad guys don't figure out <laughs> the algorithm and, and know how to, how to get around it but it analyzes them for the quality of the reviews they look for some there's some particular fingerprints um if certain accounts uh, post a whole bunch of reviews on a on a ver- wide variety of things within a span of time. That's one thing. So it's really helpful. You can put in the URL for any any uh, product page uh, on fakespot.com, or they also have a, a Chrome plugin so that if you go to Amazon in a Chrome-based browser, works in Brave, which is my preferred browser too, which is Chrome-based. Um, and then, so when you go to an Amazon page, It'll show the the grade of the reviews right there on the page. So it'll say wow. B or A or F, which is you know. And if it if it has a lot of bad reviews, it might be something you want to think about whether you want to rely on that or whether you think whether you think that's even a good product uh, to to get. So uh, fakespot dot com. It's a really handy service. Uh, I, I recommend it. Um, it's uh, it saved my bacon a few times. And it's free. <laughs> and it's free, which is perfect. So uh, I think we'll wrap it up there. And uh, we and so we had a, a great discussion about the uh, I, the Apple event this week. Um, we'll be moving on to some other topics next week, hopefully. And uh, but you know, I'd, we want to hear from you. Uh, was this helpful to you? Uh, what are you going to do? Are you good, are you an iPhone uh, buyer? Are you going to buy an iPhone or an uh, iPad or one of the other products that were mentioned? We'd love to hear what what you think of Apple's announcements. Uh, and so we'd love to to get your uh, email at technology at sqpn.com, or you can go to sqpn.com slash technology or our Facebook page, facebook.com slash StarQuest Media. Um, we'll put links to uh, some of the to our picks of the week in our show notes at sqpn.com slash technology. We do want to take a moment to thank our patrons who make it possible for us to create secrets of technology, including G. Ray, uh, Jaime L., Connie M., Peter G., and Radek K. Their generous donations at sqpn.com slash give make it possible for us to continue the secrets of technology and all the shows at StarQuest. You can join them by visiting sqpn.com slash give. We would greatly appreciate it if you could go to the Apple Podcasts or one of the other podcast directories and write a review of the show uh, if you give us a you know a top review, that really helps the algorithms and uh, helps us get the show out to a, to a wider audience, which was our goal is to share this information with as many people as possible. And if you could share the podcast with your friends, we would really appreciate it. Until next time, Pat Scott, thank you for joining me in sharing the secrets of technology. Good night. Jack Barazzini, thank you as well. Thanks, Dom. And once again, I'm Dom Bettinelli. Thank you for listening to The Secrets of Technology on StarQuest.